Okay, in this tutorial, we're going to talk about change in demand versus change in quantity demanded. Earlier we said we have to be very precise with our language because we're trying to convey very precise ideas and so we need precise language to talk about and convey precise ideas. We said that one of the ways we could state the law of demand is that demand curves go from the upper left to the lower right. Now let me pause here a second and say when you draw demand curves they will normally fall like a sheet, like gravity pulling down toward this axis down here. They're, they're always concave like that. Uh, you, ne you never see demand curves, or rarely, if they ever, look like that. They just don't go that way. Now, you might see curves that are straight, because if you take any section of the curve, it looks pretty straight. But demand curves tend to fall that way, and they tend to curve in that direction. Just so when we get in the habit of drawing them, they tend to come out in this fashion. Now, we said demand was derived from two things, desire and ability to consume. We also said this is the origin, which means that is our point of reference, the origin, the beginning, the genesis of things. So let me just point out just graphically here that if we have a price, call it P1, and we come in here, we hit this point on the demand curve. Each point on this demand curve represents a combination of price and quantity associated with that price. So if I put the label of 1 on that point, we'd have price 1 and quantity 1. So if this was a price of $100 and a quantity of 2,000 units. At point one, we would have P1Q1, which would be $100 and 2,000 units. Okay, that's what we mean by this point. It has this information in it. It has the price information in that point and it has the quantity information in that point. If we go to a lower price, let's come down here to P2. That is a change in price. At P2, we come over here. We hit the demand curve at point 2. And we have a quantity 2 quantity to associated with this price at point two. So every point on this curve has a price associated with it and has a quantity associated with it. So in the case of demand, as we lower the price, we are increasing, now here's the important term, we're increasing the quantity demanded. If we come in at this price at $100, we're going to get a quantity demanded of 2000 Why are we going to call that a quantity demanded? Because it's bouncing off of the demand curve. Later on, if we come in here and hit a supply curve and come straight down, it's going to be quantity supplied because we're bouncing off of the supply curve. In this case, we're looking at demand, and for every price, there is a quantity demanded associated with it. If we lower the price, we are increasing the quantity demanded. Now, the reason I'm emphasizing those words so much, because you do not want to make this mistake on a test, that if we lower the price, we're going to increase the demand. The word demand means the whole demand schedule. It means the whole demand curve. But a quantity demanded is only one particular point on that curve. So this quantity demanded is small. This quantity demanded is big. But, we, but 
by lowering the price, we are moving the quantity demanded, but we're not changing demand. Let me repeat that for emphasis. Price cannot and does not affect demand. And price cannot and does not affect supply. Well, then what does affect demand and what does affect supply? Glad you ask. Desire to consume and ability to consume will affect demand. And desire to produce and ability to produce will affect supply. So what we're saying here is that when I lower the price, I'm going to increase the quantity demand, quantity demanded, but if I raise the price, the quantity demand is going to go down. Now that is one concept. The other concept is what does it look like if we have an increase in demand? Notice, remember when we had our demand schedule, we've got price here. We've got quantity demanded here, and we had big $2,000 number here, and a $1,000 number down here. And when the price was high, the quantity demanded was low, and when the price was low, the quantity demanded was high. Okay? And as we change the price, we're picking off different quantity demanded numbers. Let's pick one here. Let's just do an example here rather than do it in the abstract. Bananas. Price. Quantity. Going price of bananas. Don't know. My guess is uh, uh, 50 cents per pound. And if we went to a local grocery store, there's usually one case, maybe this long, and it's got three, four rows of bananas. And if we just counted up how many pounds of, of bananas that they sold per day at 50 cents, let's just say that it's 200 pounds. Now, as the price goes up, to 75 cents per pound, what can we expect is going to happen to the quantity demanded, D-E-A-N-D-E-D, -E -E -D, the quantity demanded as the price goes up. Let's see. Our law of demand says that price and quantity demanded are inversely related, so as the price goes up, the quantity demanded has to go down. To 100. And if we lower the price to 25 cents per banana, well, then we would expect the quantity demanded to go up to maybe guess 400 pounds because people really think that's a good deal. They're going to increase their banana bread, banana pudding, etc. Now, this would be the demand schedule. And if we put 75 cents up here, we would have 100 down here. We put 50. Well, let's just do it. Uh, Let's just do it. Let's let's put right here. Um, I got to figure out exactly where I'm going to put this thing here. Let's put 25 cents right here. Uh, 25 cents, and let's go up to about here. Is 50 cents, and let's go up to about here. That's going to be 75 cents. So that's our price axis right there. And we said at 75 cents, we're going to have 100 pounds. So at 75 cents, we come in, we bounce off. We're going to call that now our 75 cents point. We're going to come straight down. And that's going to be 100 pounds right there. And at 50 cents, we ask the 50 cent question, and we're saying we're going to transfer this data onto this graph. So we come over here like this, and this number here is going to have to be 200 pounds. That's our quantity consumed. If we lower the price down to 25 cents, down to here, we come over here, we come straight down, and we're close to 400 pounds pounds. All right? So now we've taken the data in the demand schedule and we put the exact same data 
into the demand curve. So rather than be redundant here, let's just get rid of one set of data and work with just the graphical version of that data. We would call this the demand for bananas. Now, let's say that in tomorrow's newspaper, or maybe this morning, where there's a new study out. And that study happens to deal with phytochemicals. That seems to be the rage anymore, phytonutrients. These nutrients that are so small and so fragile that you can only get them from fresh fruits and vegetables because you cook them and you lose it, all that sort of stuff. But they're very significant. And so there's a Harvard study on this. And um, I don't know. I just have to make these things up as we go. And in this study, it says that um, if the typical American male um, eats on the average of two bananas a day, the risk of um, uh, prostate cancer falls by 90%. 90%. You just increase your banana content and your risk of cancer, that kind of cancer, women kind of fear breast cancer, men kind of fear prostate cancer, uh, that kind of cancer just kind of doesn't exist if you just increase your bananas, and bananas are fairly cheap, 50 cents a dozen, that's, you know, for a pound you get quite a few bananas in there, well, look at this. Oh, that's kind of interesting. And Mrs. McGillicuddy said, what's that? What's that, sweetheart? Bananas. Oh, yeah, it, it makes males' reproductive health really work right up to prime there. Oh, well, okay. Um, I'll have to keep that in mind. And sh as she's going through the grocery store, she's thinking about that Harvard study, and uh, the price happens to be 75 cents a pound. But that study says that, gosh, hubby could be a whole lot reproductive system healthier with more bananas. And so I think even though it's 75 cents a dozen, I think that she's going to buy more bananas at 75 cents a dozen. But if she's going through the store and the going price is 50 cents a dozen, she might buy more than she did at 75 cents a dozen. And she would be clear over here at that amount. And if the price was all the way down 25 cents a, dozen, a pound, they would still buy more than they would have before. Now, if we connect those dots, if I can draw it correctly here, that's fairly close. At least I hit the zeros. We'll go from D to D1. Now, we're Technically, that's kind of like D0. When you look at these curves and you see D0, D1, D2, D3, D4, etc., you don't usually go that high. What you know is that the D came first and the D1 came second and the D2 came third because you can only have one demand curve at a time. So this would be the demand right here, the demand before the news came out about this Harvard study about the relationship between banana consumption and um, prostate cancer and male reproductive health. That makes sense. Now that is not an increase in quantity demanded because we didn't say anything about price. We just said that there was a study that came out and that study happened to change, let's see, did it change desire or did it change ability? Answer, desire. All of a sudden, hey, I've got a new desire to have bananas and to feed it to my hubby here. So because of a change in desire, the demand increased. It increased when it moves away from the zero point and moves to the right. When the demand curve moves to the right, that is an increase in demand. Notice, when we have an increase in demand, we've got, we had our 75 cents here and our 50 cents and our 25 cents. That was the price and the quantity. We had these quantities in here of 100, 200, and 400. But now when demand changes, this changes to something like, let's see, it was at 100 here, and now it's like 200 come over here and it's about 200 at 50 cents we're almost maybe 350 and at 25 cents we're clear over here at maybe 600 
Notice every single quantity demanded point changed when demand changes. So when we have a situation that either affects desire or ability, we're going to get a change in demand. That's this right here. We're going to get a change in demand, which is different than a change in quantity demanded. There's only one thing that can change quantity demanded. That's this guy right here. That's that guy. A change in price will change quantity demanded. A change in desire or ability, or you could say really a change in anything else, is going to affect demand and not quantity demanded. If I was to give you a rule, and this rule has some exceptions as we go through the course, but I'd call it the P rule or the price rule. And the price rule is if you're reading a test question and it has anything in the test question about a change in price, you know right off the bat that the answer has to say the word quantity demanded in there. If it says, oh, we changed the price and demand changed, oop, error, tilt, price does not affect demand. It can only affect quantity demanded. So that's what I call the P rule or the price rule, that price and quantity demanded go together because that's what we find in the demand schedule. Now just to close this loop here, what if after this study comes out, after the study comes out, and the demand and bananas are flying off the shelf because of this increased demand that the grocery stores keep running out of bananas and so they keep putting more orders in for bananas but you, you, you can't get them that fast and so now they're actually going out in the wild and getting wild bananas and bringing them in and they're coming across the border so fast that the fumigation of bananas can't quite keep up because bananas usually come across the border on these big long stem like things and the bananas hang on this side and I can't draw worth a nickel but they hang on these they just hang on this pole and then inside the United States they usually break them off and put them in smaller packages etc well when they come in these poles like that sometimes down there in Central America, there's spiders, and spiders can lay their eggs underneath here. And that's why we got to fumigate them as they come across the border. Now, if they're coming across the border so fast that the fumigators can't keep up and they're starting to bootleg bananas across there because grocery store says, we want our bananas. People want our bananas. We can't keep up with bananas. We've got to get more bananas up there. So they're just crumping them across the border, and they're not fumigating them properly. And it comes up, and the next thing comes in the paper, say, oh, wow, with the surge in demand for for uh, bananas, it, uh, Mrs. McGillicuddy and Miss Housewife are finding some nasty surprises. They, they take their package of bananas home, and they set them over here in a nice warm kitchen, and they put them in a pantry or something as they're green and get, get, get a little bit uh, riper. And now they're getting a nasty surprise of uh, tarantula spider outbreaks in their houses. Hmm. Mrs. McGillicuddy is all for more bananas for hubby's health. But if it means the risk of tarantula spiders while you're laying in bed and you feel something and you swat it, that's not a good scenario. So Mrs. McGillicuddy now says, I don't know. No, we were not. You can eat your bananas at a restaurant, have banana pudding, banana cake, all that sort of stuff. But here, no, we're not bringing those bananas into our house. And that would take demand at every price. And as the demand curve moves toward the origin closer to zero, that would be a decrease in demand. A decrease in demand. Now, if you get this concept that as the curve moves to the right, that is an increase in demand, and as it moves to the left, that is a decrease in demand, we can make the direct transference here of stating the same thing with a supply curve, a supply curve. As a supply curve moves away from the origin to the right, to S2, 
that would be, make a two up here, that would be an increase, as, as we move this way, the numbers are getting bigger. The numbers are getting bigger. As the numbers are getting bigger, that would be an increase in supply. If we move from S1 to S3, now that would be a decrease in supply. Let's just pick this 75 cents here. Right here, we would be at this output right here, call it close to 400. If there is a decrease in supply, now it's 75 cents, we're back here and people are only going to buy 200 at 75 cents because now we had a decrease in supply. Let me close with just one final note here about movement of supply and demand. How fast can the demand curve shift? How fast can this demand curve, and I'll put a demand curve up here, How fast can the demand for bananas shift? And the answer is, well, the demand for bananas is made up of desire and ability. So if it's made up of desire, I guess we could double the demand for bananas or decrease the, banan the d demand for bananas as fast as people can change their mind. When they pick up this Harvard study and they read this study and they change their mind, demand changes instantly. Now, how fast does it take to change supply? And the answer is instantly? No. Because when we have a supply of something called bananas or lumber, to get more of it, you've got this logistic supply chain. You actually have to grow more trees. You have to have more harvesters to harvest more bananas. You just can't double the supply of bananas overnight because there's this process we have to go through to produce bananas. Moral of the story, demand can shift in a heartbeat. It can move lightning speed on the change of public opinion. However, Supply can't change that fast. It moves pretty slowly. The only time it can change fast is if we have, oh, maybe a forest fire that, that wipes out all the trees so we don't have lumber, or maybe all the oil tankers get blockaded in the Straits of Hormo or something and they can't get oil here. Then all of a sudden the supply can go down very quickly. In those cases, it's possible for supply to get down very quickly, but it's impossible, virtually impossible, to double the supply of oil or anything else overnight.